All right, next up we've got Vince Sonic. Welcome. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. We're really excited about you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a technical artist from Hungary and I have been using Houdini about four years ago. Uh, that time we were looking for a way to create road networks and other parts of our environments procedurally and we find Houdini just a perfect tool for this. And since then I, I totally turned to procedural modeling. Excellent. So tell us about the artwork that you're going to be doing today. Which uh, category was it? It was uh, day flow. And I just would like to guide you through the creation process of that artwork. Excellent. Well, let's get started. Let's get started. In this presentation, I would like to show you the way I created my entry for Mardini Day 6 the flow. First, I will talk a little about the topic and my strategy during the challenge in general. Then I will shortly explain the core idea behind the system I built for this day. After this, we jump into Houdini and I show you my graph node by node. Finally, I show you the materials I used and I talk a bit about 3D light. Last time, Hulai was a so great experience. I feel that it gave me a boost in my never-ending Houdini studies. So I was sure I will take part in Mardini as well and I will go for the Iron Heart prize. For me, a daily challenge like this is one of the best ways of learning. The tight deadline forces me to push my limits and don't give up. There are so many great tutorials out there, but for me, it can be sometimes difficult to stay focused for hours while watching them. But if I have to deliver something at the end of the day, uh, it's a different thing. So it's also a great opportunity to try features and techniques I use very rarely or I never tried before. So the most important rule for myself was to deliver something before the daily deadline. I was working on my entries after work, so I had usually one evening or one night for each piece, so managing time was really important. All of the following rules are related to saving time somehow. One of the most important factors for me was render time. My machine is not bad at all, but it's far from a render farm. And if I have one evening for the whole project, I simply can't afford to spend hours for waiting for renders. Basically, that's why I decided to create still images still, uh, instead of animations. I had the feeling that it's better to make one nice image instead of a low quality anim animation. Another important thing to keep in mind is the complexity of the project. Sometimes it is hard to scale down the original idea to a one night project. So usually I try to solve problems on the most simple way that came to my mind and try to avoid overcomplicated setups. So I usually try to come up with a good idea and solve it a quite simple way. As this challenge uh, at the end of the day is an art challenge, I think it's important to have a nice aesthetic result. So I think it's sometimes better to create something simple and create a nice composition with it uh, instead of creating something super complex and don't have time to find a good way to represent it in the final artwork. So I try to say, stay with a simple geometry but render it nicely. I try to follow these rules on most of uh, the days of the challenge. Some days I was able to follow them, other days not really. But on day six, I think somehow I found a balance and uh, these guiding rules let me create a, a good entry. That week motion was especially challenging because uh, representing a motion in a still image 
compared to an animation is can be tricky. My first idea was to create a bunch of transparent colorful glass pipes glowing, flowing to the distance on the top of each other and crossing each other randomly along the way. But after the few test renders I found this boring, uh, I didn't really like how they look. So I decided to add some glowing elements to make the whole thing more interesting. Before we jump into Houdini, I would like to give you a short overview of the whole setup. First I was drawing a curve and copied some circles along it. Then I scattered points on each circle and connected them to create new curves. Then I used resample and polywire on these new curves while I also generated curve view parameter from 0 to 1 along each curve in the resample node. Then I separated the curves I wanted to glow from the simple ones and I colorized them using the curve view attribute. Finally I added materialize and merge them back together. Then let's see how this idea works in detail in Houdini. Here in the object level I have only three nodes. One geo for the ground plane, a camera and another geo for the pipes. Let's dive into this one. First I copied some circles along a curve using resample a polyframe to create normals and a copy to points node. Then I used a for each primitives loop to go through these circles and scatter the points on them. I wanted to scatter the same amount of points but with a different random seed on each circle so I used an expression in the global seed. And I also wanted to preserve the original point numbers so in a wrangle I copied the point numbers to a new attribute called curve. If I visualize this curve attribute you can see that the points with the same ID are placed to different positions on each circle. Next I added a for each named primitive loop but instead of primitives I was looping through points with the same curve attribute. Then I connected them using an add sop with polygons by group option. Then I converted them to NURB curves. Next I resampled the curves and I used polywires to extrude mesh around them. I like the resample node because it has a lot of great options and I can create useful attributes like curve view which I will use shortly. I also like to use the polywire node. Uh, some of its nice feature is that it can create UVs by default. Basically we are done with the geometry here. From this point uh, we will deal with colors. I didn't want all of my tubes to glow so first I need to separate them using groups. To do this I promoted my curve ID to a new primitive attribute. Then I wrote a short wax code to achieve a similar thing what group by range node can do. This way I can tweak that how many pipes I want to have in my group. Then I separated my pipes based on this group with a split node. First I added colors to my non-glowing pipes. I used the ramp from attribute option with my curve attribute to add a different color to each tube. I used here some soft brown and brownish yellow. I will drive the light emission with a point attribute but these are my non-glowing pipes so I set the emission to zero in this wrangle. Finally I scaled a bit uh, my UVs. On the other branch I wanted to create the glowing effect. 
As I mentioned, the resample node is so cool and creates curve view attribute for us, which is going from 0 to 1 along the curve. Luckily, Polywire also preserves this attribute, so I can use it to colorize my geometry. If I visualize this attribute using a color node, you can see this nice transition from, from black to white. Next, I used a little VEX code with a modulo operator to split this transition into smaller sections. As you can see, the color pattern starts to, to appear. Next, I wanted to add some variation to the setup. I wanted to adjust these constant numbers randomly to make a pattern a little bit different on each pipe. To do this, I used a for each named primitive loop with my curve ID attribute and I added random multipliers to my VEX code. Using the iteration attribute of my loop as a random seed, I could create my pattern slightly different on each pipe. After this, I used ramp from attribute option on the color node and use this black and yellow color tem. I wanted to add uh, some more variation to the colors, except the black part. So in the next wrangle, I modified my color attribute with a small random number. I used a different random seed on each color channel to make it more interesting. I also clamped my colors between 0 and 1 to avoid negative or too high values. Finally, I added the emission attribute with another wrinkle. Uh, basically, I uh, simply multiplied my color attribute with a random number. I think it is nice to add these little variations. Sometimes they are barely visible but I think it makes the end result more realistic. Finally, I added two different materials to the two different branches. I will shortly show them too. I merged them back together and added a normal node for correct shading. So this is my main setup. You can easily try different versions. You can change the baseline, the colors, uh, the number of curves, uh, the amount of glowing or non-glowing curves. Uh, you can easily make an HDA for it, from it, or uh, simply play with the parameters until you find a look you like. I used three different materials. One really simple one for the background plane. It is totally black and a bit metallic. The next material is for the non-glowing pipes. Here I have a principal 3D light shader. There is an attribute node to read the color information from the geometry. I drive the base color and the subsurface color with it. And I have a texture map downloaded from Megascans to add some variation to the roughness. I also set specular, metallic and refraction to 1. And finally this is my material for the glowing pipes. Here I have two attribute readers, one for the color and one for the emission. I drive the incandescence intensity with my emission attribute and almost everything else with the color attribute. This material is, this material is non-metallic but have a subsurface and reflection. For rendering, I used 3D light. The only thing I changed here is to add a bit more samples to the default settings. I wanted to say a few words about 3D light. When I first tried to render this emissive setup with Mantra, I realized that it will be not fast enough for a daily challenge. So I decided to try something else. I didn't really want to have watermarks, 
and I uh, didn't really want to buy a GPU renderer just for the challenge. So it was a great opportunity to try 3D Lite, which is a free solution. It is still in beta, but I think it's pretty well integrated to Houdini. It was the first time I used it, but I found it generally easy to use. Maybe the only thing I can say against it is the lack of uh, the documentation here and there. But I think for a free software in a beta stage, it's totally okay. I used it several other times during the challenge. Finally, I modified a bit the final render in the compositing context. I added a fake depth of field using a ramp and a defocus node. And finally, I was tweaking the brightness and the gamma correction just a little bit and saved the final image as a PNG. This is the final entry. I achieved second place with it in the daily competition in the image category. To summarize my presentation, you could hear a little about my approach to this challenge. Maybe my most important rule was to try to keep things simple, if it's possible. Then we went through my node graph in Houdini. And I think this entry is maybe a good example of how great can a simple setup look. So thanks for watching this presentation. I hope I could show you something new and interesting. If you have any questions, you can reach me in email or you find me in social platform as well. I am happy to answer you if I can. And I would like to say thank you to the SideFX staff for organizing this challenge and for inviting me to this event. Thank you and uh, see you guys in the next challenge.